I didn't I didn't say it out loud, so I'm saying it now. But let's say you're you're examining a person whose status post ACL reconstruction uh, a week ago or two three days ago, because that's you know outpatient. That that's generally an outpatient surgery. They go, they get surgery, they go home the same day, and they're expected to be in physical therapy within just a couple of days after the surgery. We know excessive anterior tibial translation is going to be something we want to avoid, okay? Now, even though the first couple of weeks the new graft is really strong, there's just some basic things that you should be careful of. One thing we shouldn't want to do when we think about our selective tissue tension testing, we don't perform quadricep isometric, maximal isometric contraction testing for those individuals. Because what's going to happen? that the tibia is going to excessively anteriorly translate and you're going to stress the, the new graft, right? So that becomes really important, generally speaking, when you think about your um, strength testing for the quads, especially after ACL repairs, especially when you're in that zone when the ligament or the new graft is at its weakest, you want to avoid that isometric quadriceps testing, okay? I can pass these around um, as I'm demonstrating them is the Luco tape for the knee. This is probably the most common taping technique. This is the one I've used clinically. There's a lot of different ones out there. There's taping techniques for ankles, shoulders, backs. I've seen uh, trigger point taping techniques where you, you, try, you almost create like a little star around the trigger point. The idea is to try to lift the skin up and, and just take that pressure off the trigger point. So. That's definitely going to be something that if you go into this type of rehab and, and you feel like taping is going to be a, a tool in your arsenal that you want to be well versed in, you know, there's, there's education courses you can take and that'll let you practice them and all that. But what I'm going to show you is the medial patella taping technique. It's probably the most common one for those individuals with patellothermal pain syndrome. Typically, you know, females, large Q angle, when, we, when the individuals are doing their quadriceps setting and I'm watching their patella. Um, they get that lot excessive lateral glide in. You know, we just feel like the rubbing's happening on the lateral side. The idea is to apply a taping technique, which will help try to, quote unquote, reposition the patella medially. We don't think that really happens. We just said that a few moments ago in the slides that, you know, ta taping for patella positioning is not founded, is not supported in the literature. But sometimes just having that extra proprioceptive input. And that, and that extra force, medially directed force on the patella will sometimes mitigate the person's pain and discomfort. So Luco tape um, is the brown tape. Some people will also call this, you may have heard of McConnell taping. Okay, so McConnell doesn't make the tape. McConnell is the therapist who came up with the system and it, she just happens to use Luco tape as, as the primary uh, tape for that technique. Luco tape is a rigid tape, meaning that it is not flexible by any means. It, it's very firm when you pull on it, the fibers straighten out and that's all the, the, the motion there is. Kinesio taping is another very common type of taping. Um, that is the colorful red, pinks, they make black, but pastel colors, yellow, purple, pretty. That tape. I call it the sexy tape. The sexy tape. That's the tape. That's the tape where um, you can really expand that out. So we call that like a um, flexible tape, and I think it's the term they use it. Uh, they each have their own methods and theory behind them. McConnell taping and Luco uh, and kinesio taping, I should say. So if you're going to be again taking those classes, go ahead and do that. Luco tape is very very sticky. Okay and can be irritable if placed directly onto the skin. So what you use instead is a cover tape. And so this is just the um, cover roll. Okay, so they come, you have the Luco tape box and you have your cover rolls. Okay. And so what you're gonna do with the cover roll is you're gonna cover the area of the knee that you are going to tape, okay? Place that down first, and then once you're done, you'll, you'll apply the Luco tape over the top of that, okay? For this tape and technique, where you want to start is just lateral to the patella. So you need to feel where that patella is, where that patellofemoral lateral joint line is. You want to be just lateral to that, okay? 
and you want to come around medial, medially enough, they, they talk about like trying to hook the hamstring. So what I do is I feel for the medial hamstring tendons. And then once I find that, I just place my coverall just a little bit past that. And then when I do my leuco tape, just try to capture those, <clears throat> that, those hamstring tendons. It's not really gonna curl around and grab it or anything. But, but I was treating an individual where a primary, one of the primary things that she was referred for was to have this specific taping technique. So I was doing it and I was you know, going way over medially, putting all that tape on it. And then one time I happened to be out of the office and they had to see another therapist. The therapist just went from here to here. And she was very unhappy because she felt like it wasn't helping and didn't alleviate her pain when I went further over. But when you go further over, then, then that force is gonna have, you're gonna have more force um, out of the tape. So what I do with the coverall is I'm gonna get an estimate for how long I need it. And then I'll just cut right where that is. And for this technique, you're going to want two strips of this, typically speaking. Um, If you want to take a look at it and pass it around, you're welcome to. This tape is not nearly as sticky. Now what I want to do with this cover all as best I can is I want to capture that medial hamstring. Just be just medial to it. and make sure I'm covering the entire patella. So I, you know, here's the top of his patella right here. So I've got just a little bit of extra tape extending over that. And when you put it on, you try to make sure it's as free as lines and wrinkles as much as possible, okay? So I put that one there. I got that one little and can you can you roll your leg out for me yeah. perfect I want to come to pretty much the same spot just over those hamstring tendons I got a little fold in the tape there so I need to try to get rid of that I'm probably not going to get rid of it this is probably going to be where I would just say you know what throw this piece away Edit that part out, right? Totally. So the two pieces of tape overlap each other, but now what I've done is I've covered his entire patella. So here's the inferior pole of his patella right there, and he's got the cover extending below that. So I have his entire patella covered with the coverall. And so now what I do with the leucal tape is I'll probably use two strips just going right over, okay? Now when we do that though, Try to get an estimation for for how long we need that to be, probably to about there. So come on. Don't do that. Scissors are all three inches away. I know. I do this all the time, don't you know? <laughs> Start laterally, anchor. You want to, you want to pull medially. Just, just relax your leg as much as possible. Yeah, the per, you want the person as relaxed as possible. Pull that medially and come over the top. Get that around. 
and that's good. One thing you want to watch for is if it ex if it's extended too far, you might need to to cut the tape a little bit um, shorter. And then what I'll do is I'll apply a second tape about the same length as before. Are you letting the tape m push it immediately, or are you mm -hmm. repositioning it immediately? So so I anchor it laterally first. Again, getting that overlap there, okay? So I've anchored it here, and then I'm pulling medially and maintaining that as I go all the way around until the tape is the tape is set there. How hard do you do to pull? Like, is it it's hard as the, the skin will, will move. Okay. I mean, I, if I pull so hard, it'll just come right off, right? So can't be too hard. When, when they're working with their patients, or you might have patients tell you this, that their ITB is tight. And so one thing we know as a coll collagen tissue, like similar to a ligament or a tendon, the ITB itself doesn't really get tight per se. Um, the TFL that it attaches to could get tight because that's a muscle and my muscles can become um, physiologically shortened, we know that, or morphologically shortened. Um, lay down with your head that way. Um, can you grab me a, a small towel or something or something up there, uh, actually, Jonah? Uh, well, one thing that can happen, specifically at the ITB, is um, adhesive restrictions, especially between the ITB and the la vastus lateralis underneath it. So that's a very important distinction is, you know, people think about the, VL, v, the vastus lateralis and they think, okay, well, there's your vastus lateralis and there's your ITB, but remember the vastus lateralis takes up all the space underneath the ITB. So the vastus lateralis is a very, very large muscle. And so any adhesions <laughs> between the vastus lateralis and the ITB can lead to abnormal joint motion, okay? So if the vastus lateralis is contracting and that's pulling the ITB with it because those two, those two anatomical structures are adhered to each other, what does that do for the friction that's going on at the, at the bottom of the tibia and all that no-go? Oh man, okay. Um, eh, we'll be all right. You all right like that? Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so what you want to do for this technique is you want to expose the person's lateral thigh just to the greater trochanter. Okay, you don't need to go more than that. So his is right here. So what you're going to do is you can do the anterior ITB, okay, and then the posterior ITB. All right. For the anterior ITB. What you're gonna do, both of these techniques are the, th are they call, they call thumb down techniques, I'll show you what that means in a second. You're gonna need some type of a massage cream. And so what you wanna do is just kind of create a streak of the massage cream along the anterior ITB. So you just gotta kind of palpate for that and create that outline there all the way to the um, greater trochanter. And so what you're going to do for the, for the anterior ITB is thumb down technique. You're just going to place your thumb along the side of your hand. And then what you're going to do is you're going to run down the ITB until you get, oops, sorry, all the way around the greater trochanter as far as you can go. And then repeat the technique again. Is that normally pretty sensitive? It just depends. Yeah, how, how sensitive is it? I don't run. All the running you do, we add. Maybe a runner. I don't run. Yeah. Maybe not. I can do it. It's safe. Backhand, the forward hand is the one that does the anterior ITB. And the hand that's backwards behind me does the posterior ITB. This is how that technique is described. Okay? Dr. Rosicky, yes. word in between.